All right, let's look at this differential equation. We have an initial value problem because we have some initial conditions here. And also we have what almost looks like an exact differential equation, except this is a minus sign. So first of all, if we want to test this to see if it's exact, this has to be a plus sign. So your teachers might throw this at you and try to confuse you, but first you have to make sure it's plus. So we can rewrite this as uh, 9x squared plus y minus 1 dx, and then we'll change this to a plus sign and then multiply everything inside by minus 1. So we get plus x minus 4y dy is equal to 0. Okay, now this looks more like a an exact differential equation where this guy here will be m and this stuff here will be n. So if we test this, we can say that dm dy, the partial derivative of m with respect to y, will be 0 plus 1 minus 0, so we'll just get 1. Then we have dn with respect to, sorry, that is x, and we get 1 plus 0. So look at that. These two guys are definitely equal to each other, so this is now an exact differential equation. Okay, so now that it's exact, uh, all we need to do is we go ahead and solve it using our, our method with, we have phi of xy is equal to c, and this whole thing is our general solution. So phi, though, is also equal to, well, we can write it like this, we can say is the integral of n of x and y, Mm, this is dy. Remember in the last video we had, well here I'll just finish writing this, this will be plus h of x. In the last video we had m of xy dx plus uh, I think it was g of y. So this is the two different ways to solve it so I just wanted to show you that you can do it either way and it's just either way is totally fine. Okay so this is all equal to the integral of n, where's n? n is up here so we have x, this will all be in brackets, minus 4y dy plus h of x, like that. And this is all equal to, well, if we integrate with respect to y, we will get xy for the first term, minus, this will be y squared over uh, times a half, but there's already a 4 there, so this becomes minus 2y squared, plus h of x. And that integration constants all get lumped into this c that it's all equal to. Okay, so now the next step is we have to take uh, the partial derivative of phi. In this case, we'll take it with respect to x because we chose to use n here. So we can say d phi um, dx. You know what? We're going to save some space and Let's write it over on the left side. That makes more sense than starting on the right side, I think. So we have d phi over dx is equal to the partial derivative of, well, of phi with respect to x. So we have uh, dx, and so we have to multiply it by almost all of this stuff. So we have xy minus 2y squared plus h of x. Okay, and by the definition in the in the method for the exact differential equations, we say that uh, this is all equal to m. Again, if we did it the other way, if we were taking the integral of m dx plus g of y, then when we took the partial derivative of that with respect to y, this would all be equal to n. So just showing the two different methods to do it. Okay. So let's we'll take the partial derivative of all this stuff well, with respect to x. So this becomes y, this is 0, and this will become plus h prime of x. Remember, taking partial derivative of a function of only x, partial derivative with respect to x, that's just its derivative. And this is equal to m, which we had up here is 9x squared plus y minus 1. All right, so we can go and subtract y from both sides, cross those out, and then we're left with h prime of x is equal to 9x squared minus 1. So when we take the antiderivative of this, we can solve for h of x 
h of x, this will be equal to, we'll have x cubed uh, times 3 minus x. And again, integration constants are all getting lumped into this guy up here, this constant. Okay, so now we can write our, we can write what phi is. So we say phi, we can even say it's a function of x and y, is equal to, where did we have it? We have xy minus 2y squared, as we found out up here, plus h of x, but h of x is equal to 3x cubed minus x, so we can say plus 3x cubed minus x, and this is all equal to c. So if we stop right here, this would be our general solution for this problem. But because we're given uh, initial conditions, we can find the actual solution that's unique to this, uh, these initial conditions. So no, uh, with the initial conditions that we're given, we know that when y is equal to 0, uh, we have x is equal to 1. I suppose you would actually say it the other way around. You say when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. But regardless, we can plug these in. So when we do that, we will get the first term will be 1 times 0, so that will just be 0. I'll write that a little cleaner. 0 minus 0, right, because that y becomes a 0, plus, one, uh, plus 3 minus 1 is equal to c. And we want to solve for what the c is, and obviously c is going to be equal to 2. So now we can write our actual solution as xy minus 2y squared plus 3x cubed minus x. Or oh, we can even bring the 2 under this side and say minus 2 is equal to 0. Right, we just plugged in this 2 into the c here. And this that we have here is the actual solution uh, for our initial value problem given these initial conditions. Uh, and just note that this actual solution is in, actually both of these solutions are in implicit form. If you really want to, you could go ahead and try to isolate the y and put everything else on the other side of the equal sign to have it in explicit form. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.